Kara McCannuel. So again, my name is Kara McCannuel. I'm the clinical manager for Baycrest Behavior Support Outreach Teams and happy to be here and to have these key speakers in terms of our BSO partners. So today uh, we're having our behavior support rounds and it's entitled Behavioral Supports Ontario, New Best Practice Tools and Resources for 2023. Although we are meeting virtually, we acknowledge that Baycrest and our related um, Toronto Central Region Behavior Support Programs operates on the traditional territories of many Indigenous nations, uh, which have cared for the land of thousands of years, including the Anishinaabe, Haudenosaunee, and Huron-Wendat peoples. And we recognize the current treaty holders, the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation. The land remains home to many diverse nation, uh, First Nations, Inuit and Métis, Métis peoples and is subject to the dish with one spoon wampum, an agreement to peaceably share and care for the Great Lakes region. We are grateful to have the opportunity to work on this land today. You may live and work in different territories, so we enc uh, encourage you to reflect on the land on which you are located and to consider your relationship to the land and to the people who are the traditional keepers of the land. Um, just some housekeeping I would like to review with uh, with you as participant um, guidelines. The session is being recorded, as you would have heard, and will be archived on Ontario CLRI and BSO websites. Uh, your microphone is automatically muted. We will have 40 minutes of presentation, followed by 15 minutes of discussion and a wrap-up. Please place any questions you have in the chat box or the Q&A. If you have questions related to tech uh, support, please message Agnes. So you'll see her listed as telehealth Agnes with a little dog picture. Um, for those of you interested in receiving a certificate of attendance, please enter your name and email address in the completed evaluation form. So I am happy to introduce our presenters um, for again, the Behavior Supports Ontario program. Uh, we have, and you guys can always wave to Courtney Stasiak. Gonna do a big wave, there we go and Caitlin Alec. Thank you very much for coming in today. So I'm gonna switch and stop sharing and I'll let you guys share on your end. Great, thank you so much, Kara. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. And we'll get started. So thank you again so much to everyone for making the time this afternoon to attend behavioral support rounds. Uh, Courtney and I are really looking forward to sharing uh, some of the new BSO best practice tools and resources um, for 2023. So before we get started, a uh, few housekeeping items on our end. Uh, so none of the projects that we are speaking to today have any relationships with commercial interests. Uh, rather, they are very much the end products of province-wide collaborations with so many partner organizations. And in looking at who all is here today, I know some of you who are very heavily involved in some of these initiatives. So really want to acknowledge uh, all of you for all the wonderful support, guidance, um, and rich feedback that you've provided on, on many of these projects that we'll be speaking to today. Uh, none of the four projects that we'll be speaking to have any commercial supports either. Um, they have all been co-led by members of our BSO Provincial Coordinating Office uh, here at the North Bay Regional Health Centre, uh, as well as partner organizations that are aligned with BSO across Ontario. And finally, as stated here, all of the products that we'll be speaking to today are evidence-based. And while we won't, we won't be making any clinical um, medicine recommendations today, each tool or resource that we will be speaking to does align with BSO's practice standards. So the purpose of uh, today's presentation, more casually speaking, is really to catch everyone up, um, very much up to speed on the latest tools and resources that we've released provincially either in late 2022 or so far uh, here early in 2023. So more specifically, following today's presentation, you'll all be able to access new BSO tools that align with BSO's provincial practice standards, You'll uh, be ready to implement some of those new tools that enhance communication and consistency across sectors. 
And you'll all also be able to select opportunities to become involved in province-wide BSO working groups that align with your interests and expertise if you're not already involved. So altogether, Courtney and I will be speaking to four initiatives. And while we're speaking to them, we invite you to consider which ones are most relevant for your practice. As later on, we're going to ask you to participate in a quick poll to tell us which tool or resource you're looking forward to using the most. And before we get started on uh, in the, the um, actual project presentations, we also want to take the opportunity to acknowledge our colleague, Debbie Hewitt Colburn, uh, who's a project advisor with our team. She leads several projects from our office uh, and unfortunately couldn't be here today, but we wanted to include her contact details for any desired follow up. All right, let's dive in and we'll start with the, the release of BSO's new My Personhood Summary tool and its supporting resources. So here I want to acknowledge my two wonderful co-leads for this project, uh, Melanie Beaulieu and Hilary Langan from Northeast Behavioral Supports Ontario. And also want to give a huge shout out to the Provincial BSO Personhood Tool Working Group. Uh, which was uh, made up um, of individuals, uh, healthcare providers working across a variety of sectors, as well as people with lived experience. And then also want to acknowledge all of the pilot sites that trialed the My Personhood Summary tool. So since the inception of BSO, I think many of you will be very familiar with the fact that we have used various biographical summary tools in order to surface information about individuals' personhood so that we can use that information in order to tailor um, our approach and provide behavioral support services. So some of these tools um, are uh, have photos and uh, screenshots here on the screen. So you might be familiar with tools such as the All About Me tool from the Alzheimer's Society, the This Is Me tool, oh, and or the Pieces of My Personhood tool. Um, and regardless of which tool you're using or have used in the past, they're really all being used with the same purpose in mind. And that's because in order to provide person-centered care, we all know that it's essential to obtain knowledge of individuals' life experiences, significant relationships, their personal preferences, and a whole host of other psychosocial and environmental factors that impact their daily lives. And over the years, there's really been a growing desire in the behavioral support community for a common personhood tool that could travel with the person um, that, that it's describing across not only sectors, but also regions of Ontario. So in response, we launched a working group back in 2021, which is already feeling like forever ago, if I'm honest. Um, and the purpose of our working group was to update an existing tool and really expand its use across Ontario. So here's how we went about doing that. The first thing that we did was we consulted with our BSO Lived Experience Advisory. We had them look through um, about eight different personhood tools that we had gathered at that point uh, and asked them um, to review which ones they felt um, were most relatable for, and contained the information that they most often wanted to communicate to their healthcare providers. This led to the selection of the pieces of my personhood tool as a foundational product to work from. From there, we conducted an environmental scan. We really wanted to find all of the biographical summary tools that were being used um, really internationally in English um, for the BSO population. So we ended up finding 15 in total, and then we performed a content analysis of each one to figure out what topics and fields were most often included and what might be missing. That's really essential for our BSO teams to know. From there, we developed multiple drafts uh, with input from a number of working groups uh, from relevant uh, province-wide committees. And we also brought it to a couple of conferences for input along the way as well. Finally, we landed on a, a final draft, which we piloted uh, in partnership with the 13 pilot sites uh, that I acknowledged on, on the previous slide. Uh, and these pilot sites spanned across several sectors and regions of Ontario. 
We then asked each pilot site to submit their feedback on the tool by responding to a 20 question online survey. And then using the answers uh, from our pilot sites, we made edits to the tool and then uh, ultimately finalized both a PDF fillable and a Microsoft Word fillable version of what we now call My Personhood Summary. Finally, prior to its release, we created some supporting resources for the tool, some, some completed examples so people could see what it looked like once it was filled out, as well as one page poster templates so that the information could be presented in a more visual format. Next, we translated the tool um, and all of its supporting resources in French. So in French, the name of the tool is Monsomar Personnel, um, and all of those resources are available in French um, as well. And then lastly, we're just prior to its release, we designed a web page on Brain Exchange where the tool can be downloaded and where all of its supporting resources are housed. So here's what the tool looks like. Uh, so it is a two page, a fillable form, as I, as I just mentioned, available both in PDF and Word, at, in Word versions. The tool has five primary sections. So who I am now, about my past, my social, emotional, and environmental preferences, other things you should know, and then finally a built-in expressed consent form whereby the individual or their substitute decision maker can indicate their uh, consent to have the information from my personhood summary displayed in a visual format. So I won't go through each section of that tool in detail, rather I'll just point you to where you can download it. Uh, so my personhood summary and all of its supporting resources, both in English and in French, can be found on the Brain Exchange website, uh, brainexchange.ca slash BSO personhood. Uh, if you're quick and you've got your phone out, there is a QR code here on this screen, uh, but the URL is, is uh, quite short in comparison to others and easy to remember. So we invite you uh, to uh, to download it from Brain Exchange and to let us know what you think uh, over the next few months. So we'll move on to the next initiative. And while, um, as I switch gears, invite any comments, questions um, around my personhood summary, if you were one of our pilot site participants, please feel free to share your experiences with the tool in the chat pod. And we look forward to any questions about this tool. But next, we'll move on to uh, the uh, very much hot off the press release of my transitional care plan, uh, the MTCP tool and its supporting resources. So here, um, I really just want to take a moment to acknowledge the Behavioral Supports Integrated Teams, BSIT, uh, collaborative uh, co-leads uh, that I work very closely with on this initiative. So Teresa Judd, Jackie Seguin, and Jillian McConnell. And we also, uh, for this particular initiative, wish to acknowledge all of the members of the BSIT Collaborative um, who have been uh, very much focused on the MTCP tool now for quite some time. And then again, to all of the pilot sites uh, that gave this tool a try um, just a few short months ago. So I'll start here with a little bit of background. So during the COVID-19 pandemic, BSO teams were being used to support record numbers of transitions. Many of these transitions were taking place out of hospital into either long-term care homes, retirement homes, or other new temporary locations that were being created so that hospitals could increase their capacity. Of course, other transitions were taking place as well across a variety of, of, of healthcare settings. What they all had in common was an increased pace during the COVID-19 pandemic, given the sense of urgency. And so really there was a desire um, that came up from so many of our teams for some kind of tool or product or resource that they could use to communicate the essentials um, so that a person could move more safely and smoothly from one place to another. So knowing that the BSIT Collaborative um, has always had quite a passion for finding ways to improve the experience of moving from one place to another, 
we decided to take on the opportunity um, to, um, to adapt a tool that was being used here in Northeast VSO into a provincial uh, tool that could be used to communicate essential information during the COVID-19 pandemic. So for many of you, you might already be familiar with this tool. Uh, it is the My Transitional Care Plan during the COVID-19 pandemic tool. We released it uh, during the height of the pandemic, and there have been different iterations um, along the way. And I won't go through the COVID-19 version of this tool piece by piece. Rather, I'll just recognize that we really saw such tremendous uptake of this tool during the pandemic. Uh, it was really being used to support so many transitions um, to take place uh, across a variety of settings. So it's probably no surprise that as we got into later phases and stages um, of this pandemic, we began to receive requests for a version of the tool that wasn't so specific to COVID-19. So in collaboration, again, with the BSIT Collaborative, we decided to readapt the tool um, so, that it can so that it could continue to be used outside of the COVID-19 context. So the first thing that we did was we brought the COVID-19 version of the tool back to the BSIT Collaborative, and we asked them to really dissect it and tell us what was working well with it, what wasn't, and what wasn't working so well. And then next, we took out some of the obvious things, things like COVID-19 swabbing support strategies out of the tool uh, so that it was no longer so specific to moves during the pandemic. Then we landed on the final draft. And just like we did with the My Personhood Summary tool, we, we sought uh, pilot sites, again, that spanned uh, several sectors and regions of Ontario to give it a try. We ended up working in collaboration with seven different pilot sites who used the tool quite extensively uh, over a period of a few weeks. And we collected their feedback on it uh, using, um, using a, what I will admit was a very lengthy survey in order to collect very rich, specific and detailed feedback on their experiences. And finally, this all led us to what we now call the My Transitional Care Plan tool, um, eliminating out the COVID-19 piece of it. So here's a picture of uh, what the, the um, updated MTCP tool looks like. As with the previous version, the purpose of the tool really remains the same. It can be used to communicate essential information as a person who falls under the target population of BSO is moving from one place to another. This new version um, is now two pages instead of three, which we're getting a lot of positive reception on so far. Um, and it contains five primary sections. So my support system leading up to the day of my move, my functional status, my current risks, my family connections and social supports. And finally, section five offers a table whereby everybody who contributed to the tool can sign off on their contributions. So the official release of MTCP just took place uh, yesterday. Uh, so as I mentioned, it's very much hot off the press. Um, all of the tools and resources are available on the brainexchange.ca slash MTCP website. Um, the tool, its guidelines and completed examples, uh, just like with my personhood summary, are available both in English and in French. Um, members of our uh, BSIT leadership team are available uh, if anybody wishes uh, for us to come and present the tool in greater detail at any of your working groups, forums, or team huddles, so please don't hesitate to reach out. And at this point, I'll turn things over to Courtney. Great. Thank you, Caitlin. Um, continuing on that path of person-centered care, uh, next we have our person-centered language initiative. Um, I would like to start off by acknowledging our co-leads for this initiative, uh, Esther and Andrea from the CLRI, and Caitlin, who is part of this call today, who is just speaking um, from the Provincial Corning Office. Uh, it's also important for me to acknowledge the expert panel who participated in many of these initiatives. Um, but also our current working group who continue to advocate and work toward creating further resources related to PCL. Now, although there are several tools and resources available related to person-centered care, 
Uh, today, we will be focusing on what's new since 2022. So first and foremost, we have our new poster order form available. The link is provided here at the top of the screen and I can add it to the chat pod uh, in a little bit. There are three posters that are available as shown below. So the first one we have is our full version of the commitment statement uh, poster, which is here on the left. We also have the simplified version, which is right here in the center, and then our word swap poster, which is to the right hand side. Now there were some design updates that were made to these posters over the last year. Our word swap poster uh, was released in 2021, and this poster has the 15 words to consider swapping to ensure that we speak in a way that is respectful, life affirming and inclusive to all. Uh, this word swap poster was also featured in the Ontario Association for Residents Council, um, which was recently circulated as an insert within their Seasons magazine, which is always so nice to see. There are also several size options available. Um, the dimensions are listed below uh, each poster. Um, and I should mention that these posters are free. So all that is required is that um, people fill out um, the online order form with that link uh, provided above. Next, we have um, our new creation. This, uh, this next one was created um, an accessible version of our English and French commitment statement poster. Um, this accessible version aligns with the accessible digital design standards for the Accessibility for Ontarians with Disabilities Act. So there were some significant changes um, and modifications made. One, as you can see, is the layout uh, utilizing titles and subheadings um, focused in a very linear way, as well as written content, things that are just very um, simple, short, clear written sentences. Um, things that are very easy to understand, as well as the color, simplifying the color so it doesn't feel too overbearing in comparison to some of the other posters that we do have. Um, this poster is currently not available through our order form, but it can be viewed and downloaded off of our website and the link is posted below. And again, I can add this into the chat, uh, the chat pod as well. Next, we have our PCL e-course. Um, this is available for both team members as well as leadership and managers. This is a free self-enrolled course that it is open to the public. However, in 2022, this e-course became available within the surge learning platform within long-term care homes, which is an absolute huge milestone to have this embedded into long-term care staff training. Um, so we are extremely thrilled to have this opportunity. Also at this time, uh, we do have 9,005 completed e-courses to date. So the numbers continue to rise, um, but as of right now, we have 9,005, which is absolutely fantastic. And lastly, regarding our uh, PCL, we have our PCL pledge. Now our pledge is still live. The numbers continue to rise. Um, last year, our pledges reached over 10,000, which certainly called for some celebrations. Uh, currently, to date, our pledges are at 12,484, which, again, numbers continue to rise. Um, so for those who have not yet taken the pledge or are interested in doing so, um, good news for you. It is not too late. You can visit our website. The link is provided here at the bottom of the screen. Again, I can also add this link into the chat pod um, in a little bit so that you could um, take the pledge, post it on the wall so that you know that you are a um, person first uh, advocate for person centered language, which is always so great to see um, up in the different homes and uh, healthcare settings. So now I'm gonna pass it back on to Caitlin, uh, who's going to discuss the behavioral supports in acute care capacity building package. So take it away, Caitlin. Thanks, Courtney. So on behalf of our colleague, Debbie Hewitt-Colburn, I'm really pleased uh, to provide an overview of the Behavioral Supports and Acute Care Capacity Building Package. 
First, I want to recognize that uh, I know that not all of you who are here today have um, have the opportunity to work in acute care. Uh, but for those of you that do, we're really looking uh, to you to champion uh, BSO principles, including person-centered language like Courtney just spoke to um, in our acute care settings um, and or to maybe pass along this opportunity to any of your colleagues that do have the opportunity uh, to work in acute care. So on behalf um, of Debbie, I do want to acknowledge all of the behavioral supports and acute care collaborative co-leads. So this particular uh, collaborative is led by Terry Glover, Melissa Barash, Debbie Hugh Colburn, and Jillian McConnell. And on behalf of them, I also want to acknowledge the acute care collaborative members who come together monthly to work on uh, retools and resources um, to, uh, to better support individuals that are uh, in hospital. And finally, more specifically, the, capa the uh, capacity building working group members who worked very closely together in the preparation of this package. So back in February of 2020, the BSO Acute Care Collaborative released um, a product called the Behavioral Supports in Acute Care, Current Practices and Opportunities for Growth. And this, this document provided a snapshot of current practices, gaps and opportunities within Ontario acute care hospitals when it comes to supporting our population of older adults living with or present or at risk of presenting with responsive behaviors and personal expressions. Input for that particular document was collected via a province-wide survey, and a review and analysis of the survey results is what led to the, to the identification of those key themes and recommendations, of which you're seeing here a few highlights uh, on the screen here on the right. So the BSO in Acute Care Collaborative recognized the really important role of education in acute care, but also at the same time recognized that so many of the BSO best practice education and training programs take place over a full day or multiple days. So things like pieces and GPA and you first and dementiability. And that makes it really challenging for, for many of our acute care colleagues to complete these best practice education programs. So the Acute Care Collaborative saw that opportunity in response to that um, to create educational resources that could be used in both emergency department and within inpatient units that could either complement or reinforce other education um, that is very much aligned with BSO's practice standards. So they embarked on the creation of the Behavioral Supports and Acute Care Capacity Building Package. The target audience for this uh, for this package is um, uh, members of both uh, ED and inpatient units. This can include nurses, personal support workers, allied team members, porters, security, management, volunteers, really the list goes on and on. And the resources um, that are part of this package center on three key messages that will likely sound very familiar to so many of you um, that are part of, part of BSO teams or collaborate uh, with them. So one, the importance of personhood, two, all behavior has meaning, and three, your approach matters. So the acute care capacity building package is really meant to be a grab and go style resource that 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 can be used by BSO acute care team members, uh, psychogeriatric resource consultants that play a role in acute care or other educators that work in acute care who can deliver the content that's included in this package, but then also support its application, its implementation, and also be available to point to other BSO best practice resources. So what's in the package? So the uh, acute care capacity building package consists of uh, first a background and guidelines resource, uh, which provides information and direction about how to use um, all the products. It contains three posters, uh, one of which you're seeing here uh, in the center on this slide as well as three accompanying slide decks to support short mini education sessions um, that, uh, that could take place. 
The posters and the three slide decks are based on the three themes that I just walked through, and the entire package is available both in English and in French um, on, the BSO, on, on the BSO website on Brain Exchange. So here are the three posters with those key messages highlighted on top. Um, the posters really allow for a visual representation um, of evidence-informed BSO practices. We worked very closely with an artist um, and commissioned uh, a fic the, an illustration of a fictional patient. His name is Jose, um, and really wanted to take this approach. As we know, case-based approaches work so well um, in adult education and adult learning. And we also really wanted to uh, for the posters to elicit empathy through a, through a human story. Um, all of the posters are available in two different sizes um, on, on our website. And as I mentioned, they are available both in English and in French. So as I mentioned, there are, in addition to the posters, three slide decks uh, to support short education sessions um, that match each, each of the posters. So the mini education slide decks are meant to be used to deliver short 15 to 30 minute education, education sessions. Um, and we recommend that these educations take place at team stations or really anywhere um, in the building where team members can be gathered. The slide decks each, each build on Jose's story from the posters series and offer uh, very much enriched content. The, um, the slide decks also include scripted facilitation notes upon which uh, key messages that are found um, in the posters can prompt more reflective um, uh, conversation with, with the attendees in the learning uh, sessions. And then also they offer practical application strategies as well. And finally, um, we really wanted to evaluate um, the use of these posters. So there are uh, QR codes that are included uh, both on every single um, every single one of the three posters, as well as within the slide decks, so that anyone who's walking by the poster in acute care or anyone who's attending uh, any of the mini education sessions can scan the QR code and share some feedback about their experiences looking over the poster or attending one of the sessions. So the uh, the evaluation remains open. So uh, for any of you that have the opportunity um, to, uh, to, to, uh, to provide this education in acute care, or if you happen to be in acute care setting and you see one of these posters, please don't hesitate to scan the QR code. Um, in the meantime, I'm displaying now uh, some of the feedback that we've received so far uh, from those that have had the opportunity uh, to send uh, to send us feedback on the poster or the education session. Um, I won't read through each one, but rather just highlight a, a few that, that stand out here on the top left. Um, one respondent said, uh, you have to tailor your approach to the need of your patient. Such a key principle uh, highlighted there. Um, and then um, um, I'll read maybe just one more. Um, this one here, tone and body language have a larger effect on conversation than you may notice. So really so many key principles that we um, live and breathe with BSO uh, in so many other sectors and really just seeing this opportunity to bring that into acute care. So that concludes um, the four um, initiatives that we wanted to speak to today. And now I'll turn things over to Courtney. Thank you, Caitlin. Um, as Caitlin mentioned earlier, we wanna now hear from you. Uh, we would love to know uh, what tools and resources you are most looking forward to putting into your practice, maybe something that might best support you in your role. Um, there is going to be a poll that pops up uh, please take a couple minutes to complete this so that we can see um, where everyone's excitement lies. Okay, the poll is still up. We have a 60. 8% participation rate. 
maybe a few more seconds and then are you able to display the results, Agnes? I am. Beautiful. Thank you so much. We are at 81%. It looks like it has stopped now. So I'm just going to end the poll and display the results. Perfect. Oh, wow. Excellent. Okay. So it seems as though many people are really excited to implement that My Personhood summary into their practice. Um, I, I think no matter what we uh, start with, there's going to be an impact that's made. So this is really fantastic to see. Thank you everybody for participating. Okay, so as we move on, Caitlin is going to share her screen now. Um, and we're gonna navigate through our website a little bit because all of these tools and resources are publicly available on our BSO website on Brain Exchange. Um, you can find this under the tools and resources section in the menu at the top banner um, as indicated here on the screen. Caitlin is highlighting a few of the initiatives that we've uh, talked about today. So this is fantastic. Now, if you are a member of the, the BSO team, oh, I just had the poll re, re pop up. There we go. Okay. Thank you. Um, if you are a member of the BSO team, uh, you can also find these tools and resources in our BSO Provincial Toolkit, along with other clinical tools and resources. Um, Right here on the screen, this toolkit is a pa uh, password protected part of Brain Exchange. Um, so team members uh, need to fill out their credentials in order to access the provincial toolkit. So that's what you can see here, um, just like Caitlin is displaying. If you wanna learn more about the toolkit, we encourage you to reach out to your BSO leadership, um, or you can also contact us here at the provincial coordinating office and we can help uh, get you all set up for that. Uh, lastly, uh, you may already be part of various uh, BSO provincial initiatives, but if you are interested in contributing uh, in this way, we also encourage you to click on the participate uh, menu option at the top to find current opportunities in your BSO provincial collaboratives and working groups as uh, shown here uh, on the screen as well. Now, that's all we have for our BSO website. Um, we would now like to open up uh, the chat pod for those who may have any uh, questions or comments. Uh, please feel free to uh, type in the chat pod or in the Q&A box and we'd be happy to, uh, to answer. All of our credentials here are on the screen. Um, so please do not hesitate to reach out to us um, and also, please follow us on Twitter. Uh, we do post announcements, upcoming events, and so much more. So you can find those types of um, posts here on our Twitter feed as well. So we will now open up the floor for any questions. Thank you so much, Courtney and Caitlin. So as Courtney said, now's your opportunity to um, either use the Q&A or the chat box. Getting some thanks for a great presentation. Perfect, and we'll also take this opportunity um, to put a couple of the uh, person-centered language uh, links in the chat pod. Um, we have a number of posters that are going out across Ontario as we speak. Uh, so if any of you work in settings uh, that may benefit from a large uh, PCL um, a poster on display, we certainly encourage you uh, to, uh, to reach out. Um, uh, to uh, to get uh, a copy or two of our free PCL posters. Great. So, um, Caitlin, Courtney, there's a question in the chat box. Is it possible to continue in-house um, personhood summary as a transitional piece? Yes, absolutely. We, we, we recognize that change takes time. Um, and so we'd absolutely encourage you, if you are using a personhood tool, um, 
in within your long-term care home or across your team. Uh, definitely encourage you uh, to have, um, definitely encourage you to have a look at the uh, BSO My Personhood Summary Tool um, as we've really tried to consider um, so many different aspects of what you might really want to know about a person when it comes to behavioral care planning. There are fields on My Personhood Summary that aren't typically included on other personhood tools, uh, things like low points in life, which we know are, are really so important um, for us to know for behavioral care planning, um, as well as things that I am known at, and things that I am known for or really good at. Um, so there are certainly some, um, some potential encouragers as well that are on my personhood summary. So I encourage you to check out the provincial form, but definitely appreciate the transition period. And thank you so much for that question. Uh, Cody had a hand up, but we can't unmute you. So um, Cody, we'll encourage you to use the Q&A box um, or the chat. Uh, there was another question asking about, is there a new transitional request referral form? Um, so um, that sounds like that might be something developed at a regional level. Um, so if there is a new transitional request a referral form that might be specific to your area, um, but Shannon, happy to connect offline if that might be easier. This definitely isn't one that is uh, specific for, uh, for use across the province. Super. And another um, person asked, so Anne Marie asked, do we see our PRCs or a psychogeriatric resource consultant for posters? Yes, absolutely. So we definitely encourage you to reach out to your PRCs. Um, if you, um, assuming that you're referring to the person-centered language posters, you can definitely reach out to your PRC or simply fill out the form yourself as long as you have uh, permission to display the poster somewhere visible in the home. Some of the places um, that we've heard, um, depending on layout and, and size, we have some teams that have been putting them in elevators, uh, just knowing that, you know, a ride in the elevator gives you a few, a few moments to peruse some of the posters that are on display there, um, or in a staff room, um, a cafeteria. Um, there are a few different ideas where you might want to uh, place those PCL posters, um, that, but definitely encourage you, yes, either reach out to a PRC or fill out the form yourself. They are free regardless. Wonderful. Uh, I saw, I think it was a Melissa who had their hand up again. If you can please use the chat box if you have questions. Oh, by accident. That's okay. <laughs> Anyone else have any questions? We have uh, some time. Now's your opportunity. Uh, so some questions in the Q&A. Um, I am new to this position and previously my home did not have a well-organized BSO program. Uh, it was mostly ADHOC. Um, I am trying to set up a, uh, up a prioritized to-do list so that I can set goals, objectives, and initiatives. I have been using the Brain Exchange for materials. Any other ideas? That's wonderful. Yes. Yeah, so thank you so much and welcome to the BSO family, Yvonne. Uh, it's wonderful to meet you virtually. Um, so we definitely encourage you um, to continue to peruse the Brain Exchange website. There really is quite a lot uh, posted there. Uh, if you need some assistance in prioritizing that to-do list, we certainly encourage you to reach out to us. Happy to meet with you and the other uh, BSO leadership in your area. Um, if you'd like to, to reach out to us. We'll, um, Courtney, I'll ask that you put uh, one of our emails um, in that uh, chat pod for ease of clicking on that directly. Um, definitely encourage you to reach out to us and we can loop you in with your BSO leads. Um, and then to also, if you have the opportunity to connect with other neighboring long-term care homes that have BSO embedded teams, I think there's so much uh, opportunity to also learn from one another if you happen to know who that is. And if not, feel free to reach out to us and we can absolutely connect you. Super. Another question in the Q&A. Uh, would you speak in more detail about the transition tool, please? Would this be sent when transitioning from retirement home or long-term care to acute care? 
Yes, yes to all of the above. So the transitional, the My Transitional Care Plan uh, tool can be used to communicate essential information regardless of where the person is coming from. So we know from, uh, from the data that we were able to collect with the COVID-19 version that it was most often being used to support moves into long-term care. Um, however, it does not, that doesn't need to be what it's used for. It is essentially a two page, um, I've heard to it referred to as a cover letter uh, to accompany all of the other clinical documentation that needs to go with somebody as they're moving from one place to another. So we know sometimes um, those discharge packages can look about this big uh, and be a little bit daunting to go through, especially when a move has to take place so much more quickly these days. Um, so the MTCP tool really summarizes a Here's what you need to know for day one, um, and then ref and then um, uh, refers to, to other information that's also available for the person. So I encourage you to download it um, on the Brain Exchange website. Take a peek um, at the tool and its guidelines for use. The guidelines for use are only a handful of pages, so it's really um, not too lengthy of a document. Uh, and then uh, we really encourage you to give it a try one time, see how it works for you, and then really adapt from there. So um, if there's any other questions that come to mind about the MTCP tool, again, don't hesitate to reach out to us. Great. Um, Kara, before, sorry to interrupt you. I just want to make sure um, I am posting links in the chat pod. Now, I don't have the option, and I'm hoping it goes to everybody, but I don't have the everyone? option for to send to everybody. Yeah. So, I've been so I don't know if everybody's getting it. I've been resending your, your messages to everyone. Wonderful. Okay. Perfect. Super. Okay. Another question um, or comment rather, Caitlin um, Reynolds says the personhood tool is fantastic. It's brief, which is beneficial considering how busy floor, uh, floor staff are. All behavior has meaning and, and is communication. The personhood tool brings so much light and understanding to a lot of the behavior uh, we see during transitions. Thank you awesome. for that. Thank you so uh, much, Caitlin. Uh, another question in the Q&A. I am new to the BSO position and our home would certainly benefit uh, from these posters. Um, how do I get a hold of my PRC? I am at um, Care Sent Care McLaughlin. Yeah, we can definitely, I'll make note um, or sorry, Davina, can, if, can, if you can put your name in the chat pod, um, we can um, uh, connect you right after uh, today's call, uh, just so that you can get a hold of your PRC, and if not the PRC directly, then the BSO lead in your region. So if you don't mind, or if it's easier just to send us an email or give us a call, please, please do that. Happy to make the connection, uh, and we can definitely commit to doing that prior to end of day today. Great. I'm um, not seeing any other questions. Uh, Agnes did tell me that if you want, you can actually use the hand up emoji and then she can unmute you. So if you wanted to um, chat, you can. Give it another minute to see if anybody takes anything more. I now have access to send to everybody. So Super. I will resend. Okay. So there's some feedback coming through. Just in terms of uh, wrapping up, I'd like to thank everyone for joining us today. Thank you to the presenters for the useful content. Really beneficial. Always great to hear from BSO. Um, just a quick reminder that if you would like a certificate of attendance, please complete the brief evaluation survey, uh, which will be emailed to you. The recording will be available on the Ontario CLRI and BSO website. So I know there were a couple messages coming through about that. Uh, thank you, every uh, everyone, again, for joining us and have a wonderful day. Here's some other information. If you have, uh, we have a number of ways for you to be able to communicate with the Ontario CLRI, including visiting the website, following um, them on social media, Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn, and sign up to receive updates from, from us through our e-newsletter. Thank you, thank you all.